You are mysterious. You are romantic. You are fragile. But you are also tough. You are fairies. Angels. Spirits, embodying elegance, beauty, dreams, and legends. Your lives are a long march. An adventure that crosses mountains. Isn't Taiwan gorgeous? It has very weather and diverse landscapes. Nature has given this land a stunning, diverse array of living beings. There are close to 400 butterfly species alone. Swallowtails, milkweed butterfly, white, They spread their beautiful wings and flutter around through the air. Oh, this isn't a butterfly, but actually a moth. Look at its antennae. They are like two pretty feathers. But the antennae of butterflies in Taiwan look like matchsticks. This is a moth. This is a butterfly. This is a moth. 
this is a butterfly. Then how about this one? If bees were to disappear, half of our food would be gone as well. Just imagine, if one day all the butterflies disappeared, what would happen then? Before you answer that question, I'm going to tell you a story. A story about this pretty little thing. This is a female butterfly with buns in the oven. She's looking for a good place to lay her eggs. Not here. Not here either. What's she looking for? Well, none other than the freshest, most tender leaves of certain host plants for her babies to feast on after they're born. Even before she dies, she has to check each leaf carefully to make sure there's no other eggs left, so other larvae won't eat them. See? This is what I'm talking about. The female purple crow butterfly wants to give her babies the best, so her requirements for egg-laying conditions are stricter than those of other milkweed butterflies. Sometimes, she thinks she's found the right place, only to give up and keep looking until she's satisfied. This butterfly mom will lay about 100 eggs before her short but beautiful life comes to an end. From here on out, after three to four days, a new cycle of life will begin. Oh, my bad! I haven't even introduced the protagonist of our story. <clears throat> the Purple Crow, classified under Euploia in the Nymphalidae family of the Lepidoptera order, is one of the most common butterflies in Taiwan. It weighs 0.2 to 0.5 grams. Its wings are 3 to 5 centimeters long. The body is divided into three parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. The head is like a small black ball with a pair of big smooth compound eyes and two flexible antennae. Hidden underneath is the mouth part that looks like a drinking straw. Three pairs of legs are located on the thorax, but shorter, smaller forelegs are not used for walking. They are instead folded up on the thorax, giving the impression that the butterfly has only four legs. The upper side of the four wings are scattered with scales that give off a metallic blue and purple sheen. The flapping wings have a dreamy display of blue and purple hues varying with the intensity and angle of the light, as well as the observer's position. This is also known as iridescence. 
in our story. What's remarkable about the purple crow butterfly is that when winter comes, unlike other butterflies that may die from the cold or quietly hide under piles of fallen leaves, tens of thousands of them silently migrate southwards and settle in mountain valleys south of the Tropic of Cancer, creating a spectacle known as the Valley of Purple Butterflies. This brings to mind the famous monarch butterfly. Every fall, hundreds of millions of monarchs fly from Canada and the U.S. all the way to Mexico to spend the winter. It's a wonder how two different species of butterflies, separated by the vast Pacific Ocean, share such similar behavior. Let's go back in time to 1861, when 25-year-old Robert Swinhoe arrived in the distant land of Taiwan by ship to take his post as British Deputy Consul. Mr. Swinhoe showed little interest in his diplomatic duties or the violent local uprisings and riots. Instead, he had a great passion for Taiwan's natural ecology. As he journeyed deep into the forests and indigenous tribes, he documented the ecology of various animals like the Formosan macaque and sambars. As scientific classification was all the rage, he sent over a hundred specimens of previously unknown species back to England. He also systematically published articles on his Formosa adventures in important periodicals. The first purple crow butterfly to be recorded in Taiwan was captured by none other than Robert Swinhoe. Who was then indulging in his passion? It is now known as the Swinhoe's Purple Crow. The specimen he captured is now in the collection of the British Museum. However, what we now call purple crow in Taiwan actually consists of four different species: the Swinhoe's Purple Crow, the Blue-Branded King Crow. The striped blue crow and the dwarf crow. Well, they may look alike, but they are not exactly the same. So, how do you tell them apart? It's pretty simple. The dwarf crow has dots on one side. Blue-branded king crow has dots on two sides. Swinghouse purple crow has three dots, and the striped blue crow has dots all over. Next time you spot them in the wild, you should be able to recognize them. But for the sake of convenience, we'll just call them all purple crow. Chinese people of Taiwan, because of their beautiful and beautiful nature. 每年吸引了一百多万的观光旅客。这些观光客之中，有的是到台湾专门收集蝴蝶标本的，因为台湾有“蝴蝶王国”之称，对于他们的生态环境也极力保护。只可惜蝴蝶生命短暂，为了长久欣赏它们的美丽，不得不制成标本或是艺术品。现在
，就让我们来看看这台湾岛上的蝴蝶王国情形。Yes, Taiwan was once internationally known as the Kingdom of Butterflies. This started over a hundred years ago when the Japanese began trading butterfly specimens, and Taiwan saw its first wave of butterfly catching. After World War II ended, the butterfly processing industry resumed, and all kinds of specimens were created. Both their beautiful wings and colorful scales were once again used for butterfly paintings. These butterfly crafts were exported to Europe, America, and Japan, bringing Taiwan global recognition. Butterflies were not only a means of livelihood and children's education, but the backbone of economic support for over 10,000 households in Taiwan. Maybe our parents or grandparents used to go up to the mountains with a net. Hoping to catch butterflies, they would get paid five cents or a dollar per butterfly, and even more if they caught a rare species. Back then, the mountains were filled with butterflies, and the supply seemed endless. The Butterfly Valley was then a secret base for professional butterfly hunters. Here are the specimens of monarch butterflies from America, and the once common but now extinct species, king crow. They both once flutter happily here in the bountiful land of Taiwan. But before long. The earth started warming up, and the butterflies we thought would never run out began to dwindle. The butterflies we took for granted gradually disappeared.
Hi there, little guy. Welcome to this world. Although this world isn't always perfect and is full of dangers, you'll find that your life will bring great joy to this world. Your mom isn't around, so who taught you this? The first thing you do after you're born is to nibble at the eggshell. This allows you to not only replenish nutrients but avoid being detected by predators. You're truly smart. As the larva. Your one and only mission is to eat non-stop. If you think you're not eating elegantly enough, let's take a look at your relatives. They are quite impressive, aren't they? One day, you feel uncomfortable all over your body. Your body wants to grow bigger, but your skin won't stretch with it. Eventually, your skin splits open. And you shed it like a set of clothes. And then, you eat your old skin all up. This process happens once every few days, and you mold your skin four times in your life. Each stage between molds is called. An instar. It's like you're embarking on a journey through the cosmos. Your future wings will capture an entire universe. You'll have scary-looking tubules on your body. You'll have vivid colors. This is a way to simply tell others that you're poisonous and don't taste good. Look at your friends. They turn themselves into snakes, twigs, or even some bird droppings. They have no choice, as they are just tasty, moving protein snacks for birds and mantises.
Some people believe plants also have souls. In the forest, your clan probably eats more plants than all other insects combined. That's why the plants have to protect themselves with thick skin, sharp thorns, and resin or milky juice. But you're even smarter. Look how you cut off the leaf stalk of a poisonous plant, waiting until the milky juice runs out before eating. But some plants have another trick. If you keep attacking them, they'll send out an SOS signal. So what does this signal do? It calls out your enemies. If there's a bad guy in our story, here it is. It's the Paris toy wasp, your clan's biggest natural enemy. Cleverly jump off the leaf. Like a spy, you dangle from the leaf by a thread, waiting for your enemy to leave. Phew! That was close. You may have dodged the bullet, but your friend isn't as lucky. Wasp doesn't just eat him up. Instead, it lays eggs inside your friend's body. Your friend feels weird all over because a baby wasp is eating him alive from the inside. Even when you escape from Paris toy wasps, other dangers still lurk around. Take a look at this stink bug and what it does to your friend. It first injects venom to paralyze its prey, and then slowly sucks up its body fluid. During your larval stage, which can last for about 20 days, you have to live in constant fear.
But even if your friends die, they actually become a part of other animals. So don't condemn the bad guys. Life is in fact a wonderful cycle. Don't worry about it now. You'll understand as you get older. And you are growing up soon. Something very significant is going to happen. Your world will be condensed inside this charming, small, and completely still cocoon. Why does your cocoon radiate a metallic luster? Scientists have come up with various theories. Birds are scared of shiny objects, or the mirror-like surface reflects the environment serving as a camouflage. But regardless of what others may say, what truly matters is that behind this mirror, you will create a new version of yourself. Or, I should say, you'll discover who you really are. Your muscles, wind skills, eyes, and organs appear to have been preparing for this day since you were born. Nothing happens by chance. All the factors have finally come together. In this condensed little world, cells die, get absorbed, split, and rebuild every day behind this mirror-like surface. You're about to awaken. These two figures are Cupid and his lover Psyche. In Greek mythology, Psyche is often depicted with butterfly wings. Her name, Psyche, means spirit in Greek. In the famous ancient Chinese love story, The Butterfly Lovers, after the tragic death of the hero and heroine, their spirits transform into butterflies and fly away. Legends of butterflies as the spirits of humans have been told in every corner of the world, from ancient Egypt and Mexico to Ireland and Jerusalem in the foothills of Daoshan in Taiwan.
You used to crawl on leaves and eat nonstop every day, but now you'll become something totally different. Your rebirth has spawned countless stories, myths, and illusions over thousands of years. Through you, people have seen freedom. Rebirth and liberation. They've seen beauty and divinity. When you soar in the air, you are a living miracle. The weather is getting colder, and you notice it, as do your friends. When the first cold front moves south, and other insects find cozy places for hibernation, you and your friends gather and prepare for action. You embark on a long-distance trip for the very first time. Your wings point south towards warmth.
on your flight, you see the world in all its splendor for the first time. You see a variety of trees swaying and singing different songs. Song song in the valleys and by the sea. On your flight, you also see strange things that you've never seen before. You don't know their names, so you have no idea you are flying over ports, farms, chimneys, bridges, and cities. You also see humans for the first time. With fresh eyes, you see different worlds as you fly through various places. During the day, you hurry through your journey together and rest under the starry sky at night. Because your wings are the colors of the cold starry night. You and your friends fly hundreds of kilometers to a low elevation valley that shows you from the wing tree northeast monsoon. You feel the pulsating surge in your blood and the ancient call from within your genes. You know it's here. Listen. This is the sound of one butterfly flapping its wings. This is the sound of two butterflies flapping their wings. And this is the sound of thousands of butterflies flapping their wings. This is Stao Shan is the only mountain in southern Taiwan that is over 3,000 meters in height. Like a colossal screen that shields against a chilly north wind, is the best wintering habitat for your clan. You feel a sense of belonging, brimming with joy. You know who you are. This is your utopia, your Shangri-La and Garden of Eden.
Life here has its own rhythm, following the movement of the sun. Every morning, as the first rays of light enter the valley, you feel a surge of delight. You flock to the treetops to bask in the sun. Your body temperature changes with the environment. And after absorbing solar energy, you gain enough strength to drink nectar and gather honey along the stream. Stable water sources are crucial to you. During the wintering period, you need to drink a huge amount of water every day. Besides your clan, the Blue Tigers clan is also here. You communicate with each other through rapid flapping wings to identify your own kind. In the afternoon, now that you're properly fed, you go back to the valley and rest in the trees. This is the warmest, calmest, and most peaceful time of your life. However, while experiencing the beauty of living, you also sometimes face the reality of death which is always close by. Some of your friends have used up their body fat during the long and harsh journey. Hidden dangers also lurk around every corner. The massive number of Butterflies in this warm valley attracts a variety of spiders that feast here. If you run into their transparent sticky webs, you are in big trouble. But you have developed some amazing tricks, like playing dead. And when the coast is clear, you will come back to life again. You need sunlight, but too much can be bad. Especially during the dry winter in southern Taiwan, 
Sometimes it only rains once throughout the entire winter, and the streams dry up. Without water, you can't survive. But none of these challenges can stop you from seeking the joy of life. In this cozy winter valley. Unlike other butterflies living solitary lives, you all come together for a mating ritual. Male butterflies flap their wings, and a sweet aroma fills the air. The hair pencils extending from their abdomen. Sprinkle endless sex pheromones, signaling their desire. That sexy smell is a signal that tells female butterflies, "I'm healthy and good at mating. Come and fly with me." This love story gives birth to new lives and miracles. You're waiting, eating to your heart's content, and straining all your senses now with a stronger body. You know the journey will soon begin. It drizzles in early April. The spring rain brings water to Taiwan's dry winter land. Although a few drops of rain can easily knock your nearly weightless body to the ground, you still enjoy the gentle rain. But what you like even more is when the sun comes out. After the rain, after your wings have dried and you've had some rainwater to drink, you're ready to take off. You can feel the weather getting hotter, and know it's time to leave. Unfortunately, the lovely, quiet valley where you had your mating ceremony. May not be there for your kids when they come back next year. Some areas may be destroyed by typhoons and torrential rain, and some may be buried by landslides. And some may be leveled by humans to build houses and parking lots.
but you aren't bothered by what the future will bring. Right now, you're focused on flying to the north, back to your birthplace to lay eggs. In a place with an appropriate temperature, so your babies will arrive safely in this world. On your journey, you fully experience the pulse of spring. White, red, pink, and purple. Colors have their own meanings and languages. They are like sweet kisses. Nectar and flowers wave to you with their colors calling not just to you, but also to many other creatures. In this field, there are mango flowers, an important rest stop during your journey back north. You not only nourish yourself here, but pollinate the flowers, creating another miracle of life. Thanks to you, this summer, people will enjoy golden yellow mangoes. In spring, other hungry animals are also active. Like the camouflage hunters that wait patiently for their prey. This is a patient, well-camouflaged little sniper, crab spider. It's a spider that crawls like a crab, has eight eyes, and doesn't weave webs. By hiding behind a flower, it can catch creatures like you who are not sensitive to patterns and shapes. Watch out! You've been tricked! You quickly release your hair pencils that not only attract females, but also emit a pungent smell that can drive away enemies. It seems that other animals don't like your smell either. Like this spider that cuts off its web and begs you to leave because of the smell from your hair pencils. In the eyes of others, you are dressed all pretty every day and leisurely collect nectar in the sun. But in reality, you face many dangers and struggles. However, from another perspective, your life is also fun and exciting. Looks like it's not a good day for the green hunter. Huh? Is it raining again? Oh no! Pesticide! To you. Pesticide is a lethal poison.
The same can be said for your predators. How do I explain why humans plant massive fields of just one crop amid nature's perfect design? And what about the connection between bugs munching on our crops and humans spraying pesticides to kill them, all in pursuit of bumper harvests and cash? Your brains might be seed-sized, but can you understand why we are spraying harmful stuff on the very food we eat? This might just be the hardest part of our story, my fluttering friends. It's the challenge of humans and their rules, their building, and their activity. Your journey was planned long ago. You followed a certain route for generations, but this east-west highway just happened to be built right on top of your northward migration path. No wonder you're confused as to why your once elegant and romantic life is gone without a trace. You're getting pounded by that high-speed traffic, stirring up chaotic airflows that make it so difficult for your feather-light wings to steer. You're no longer young and tired from the long flight. Some of you are lugging around heavy eggs. You just want to rest a bit. You're now weak and fragile. You're not dealing with bobos, parastoy wasps, crab spiders, or mantises. What you encounter is a danger that never existed a century ago. It's a gentle kind of death. Some of us humans are trying to do something about it. Efforts, though, might seem small in the grand scheme of things. It's a start, nonetheless.
as they say, when a butterfly flaps its wings, a month later, a hurricane may occur in some far-off place. Everything on Earth is connected one way or another, though they may appear unrelated. It's like a vast and intricate web of life. The challenges you will face are getting bigger. But your population is getting smaller year after year. You don't have a language and remain a mystery to us humans. That's why marking was invented. We leave marks on your bodies. When you're captured again, we can better trace your tracks across this land throughout the seasons. Many humans are working hard to understand you. They want to know your flight paths, find a language to communicate with you, and find a way to coexist with you.
you've flown through mountains and overcome hardships. Now, you finally feel the excitement and calling of birth at this very spot, where you stop to pick a good nursing room for your babies. As long as there's one tree left, there's still hope for your future generations. Scientists have said you are a basic indicator of our environment. If you all disappear one day, it means the trees in this area are in bad shape. It's a huge problem if trees disappear. If butterflies were to all disappear one day, our children and grandchildren could only imagine you through pictures and specimens. A few butterfly craft stores may have to close, and some flowers may disappear. Who knows? Maybe this butterfly effect may not be as bad as we expect. But who isn't amazed by the sudden appearance of a butterfly when they least expect it? Time seems to stop while we gaze at them. It's like the beauty we find in art, hymns, and love. Indescribable, yet pure. A beauty that brings tears to our eyes. Such an unexpected beauty brings us comfort during the tough moments of our lives. Your existence alone is a gift of life. As you lie down and fall asleep, your shriveled body doesn't have any body fat or energy left. You're drained. Not just because laying eggs is exhausting, but because the lives of purple crow butterflies are longer and busier than others. Don't be sad. You've helped feed the ants and other critters. Now you're just heading back. To the loving arms of Mother Earth.
Hey there, little guy. Welcome to this world. <laughs>